Okay, here we go with 9-4. We're just moving right along. Oh, sorry I didn't start the slideshow yet. No wonder. Here we go. Much better. Okay, hypothesis test for a population proportion. We're going to look at two objectives here. A hypothesis test is about a proportion using a p-value method and test a hypothesis about a proportion using a critical value method. So first we're going to look at testing a hypothesis about proportion using a p-value method. Can virtual reality be used to enhance education? I think it's pretty cool. In 2016, survey of teachers conducted by Samsung, 85% of them said that using virtual reality in the classroom would have a positive effect on education. One educational spe specialist believes that the percent has now increased to more than 90% since virtual reality equipment has become more available. So she samples 500 teachers and finds that 471 of them believe that virtual reality would have a positive effect. She can conclude, or can she conclude, that the proportion of teachers who believe virtual reality would have a positive effect is greater than 90%. So this is an example of a problem that calls for a hypothesis test about a population proportion. We're going to use the following notation. P is the population proportion of individuals who are specified in a category. X is the number of individuals in the sample who are specified in the category. N is the sample size. And P hat is the sample proportion of individuals who are in the specified category. P hat is going to be de defined as X divided by N. So the number of individuals in the sample divided by the sample size. So the method for performing a hypothesis test about a population proportion requires that the sampling distribution be approximately normal. The following assumptions ensure this. We have a simple random sample and the population is at least 20 times as large as the sample. So this is a little different. So instead of greater than 30 now, we're looking at 20 times as large as the sample for the population. The items in the population are divided into two categories. The values in n times p sub 0 and n times 1 minus p sub 0 are both at least 10. Let's take a look at what this means. Here you have your p sub 0, 1 minus that. These two are going to add up to be 1. Okay. So we're going to state the null and alternate hypothesis like we have been. If the, making a decision, we're going to choose a significance level. We're going to compute the test statistic, which is a Z statistic. We're going to compute the P value. Left tailed would be the P value is the area to the left. Right tailed the P value to the area to the right. Two tailed would be the sum of the area to the left and to the right. Now. Interpret the p-value if we make a decision to reject the null hypothesis if p-value is less than or equal to the significance level of alpha. Then state the conclusion. So here we are with the virtual reality uh, example again. Can she conclude that the proportion of teachers who believe it will have a positive effect is greater than 90%? Let's use a 0.05 level of significance. We check the assumptions. We see that we have a simple random sample. We see that the teachers, the population of teachers is more than 20 times the sample size. So the proportion specified by the null hypothesis is P equals 0 0.90. That's the 90% that we're saying have a positive effect. Now, if I take 500 times that, I will get 450 which is bigger than 10. If I take n times 1 minus p, which is going to end up being 1 times that, I will get 50. Now, since both of these are over 10, the assumptions are satisfied and we can move forward. So the null hypothesis is that p would equal 0 0.9 and versus the alternate, which is going to be greater than 0 0.9. The sample proportion is that 471 over the 500, 
which is 0 0.942. Now the value of P specified by the null hypothesis is that 0 0.9 probability. The test statistic is a z-score of p hat, and that will be given by this. You're going to take p hat minus your null over the square root of your null times 1 minus your null divided by n. So here we have it, 0 0.942 minus 0 0.9 divided by that 0 0.9 times this is going to end up being 0.1 divided by 500, and we get 3.13. Now it's a right tail test, so the p-value is the area to the right of z equals 3.13. Now table A2 and technology will find that this is 0 0.0009. Since P is definitely less than 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis at 0.05 level, and we can conclude that more than 90% of the teachers believe virtual reality have a positive effect on education. So before they said 80%, well, they can't just say, well, now I think it's 90% and use 90%. They have to prove that, and that is what we just did. Test hypothesis about a proportion using a TI-84. Here we have the same example. We're going to uh, look at an example of a problem that calls for a hypothesis test about a population proportion. And we have the same thing that we looked at before as far as our notation. Again, same. So now we're going to go to 1, which is prop Z test command perform hypothesis test for this population proportion by pressing stats and then test and then we're going to go down here to this. If the sample proportion p hat in the given problem, the value of x can be computed. So here we have it. Now we're going to state the non-alternate hypothesis making a decision, choose significance level. These are all the same that we looked at before. We check the assumptions already and we're good. And we look at the non-alternate hypothesis. Oh, sorry, let me go back here. So the p-value is approximately this value, so since it's less than 0 0.5, we once again are going to reject the null. And we can conclude again that 90% of the teachers believe that virtual reality will have a positive effect. All right, let's look at objective two, the test the hypothesis about a proportion using a critical value method. Here we're looking at a lot of the similar things. Um, then we're going to look at the hypothesis using a critical value instead. Here we have a nationwide survey of working adults that indicate only 50% of them are satisfied with their job. The president of a large company believes that more than 50% of his employees are satisfied with their job. To test his belief, he surveys a random sample of 100 employees and 54% say that they are satisfied. Can he conclude? that more than 50% of his employees at the company are satisfied with their job. Let's use 0 0.05 significance level. Now we have a simple random sample. The sample size is 100 and the sample proportion P sub 0 is specified by the null which is 0 0.5. So if we multiply this we get 50 here and we get 50 here, so they're both greater than 10. So if the total employees in the company is more than 2,000, as we shall assume, then the population is more than 20 times the sample. All the assumptions are therefore satisfied. That's the first thing, that's why I paused. I wanted to look and say, does it say that there are more than 2,000 employees? Doesn't really say. So they're saying, for this example, we're going to assume it. Here we have our null and alternate hypotheses. It's a right tail test, so the critical value is 
Then we recall that we're going to take our 54 divided by our 100 sample, plug everything in for our z value, and this is a right tail test, so we reject it. If the null hypothesis z is greater than 1.465, and because 0 0.8 is smaller than 1.465, we are not going to reject it. See, it falls right here. So he can't really say that more than 50% of his employees are satisfied with their job, even though that one sample that he took had 54. All right, so the notations in performing hypothesis tests about population performance, the assumptions for performing hypothesis tests about a population proportion, how to perform a hypothesis test about a population using a p-value method, and how to perform a hypothesis test about a p-value proportion using critical value method. And that is it for 9.4. So that'll do all of our videos for, that would be day 11. See you next time.